If I don't know you already, hi, I'm Bonnie. Um, I am a software engineer at Twitter New York. Um, and more relevantly to all of you probably, uh, I'm the author of Learning React Native, uh, which is a book that was published by O'Reilly earlier this year. Um, so we're gonna be talking about some React Native stuff today. Uh, if you want to find me afterwards uh, and ask me questions, that would be awesome. Uh, you can also find me on the internet. I am at Brindell. Uh, you can also read my blog at bonnieeisenman.com. All right, so let's get started. Um, so today I wanna sort of talk to you about a retrospective, uh, taking a look back at the last year and a half of React Native. And so we're actually gonna start a little bit before that. Uh, we're gonna start in the world before React Native, um, which I know is like super scary, super weird. Um, just kidding, right? This is the very, very near past. Um, so what we're actually talking about here is 2014. Um, and 2014 was a pretty interesting year, uh, especially when it comes to mobile development. Um, so I apologize, I only have uh, statistics for the US. Um, but in general, uh, what we see is that in 2014, mobile de uh, time spent on mobile overtakes for the first time uh, time spent on traditional web browsers, so desktop and laptop. Um, this is huge. If you are a web company, mobile is no longer this like secondary add-on screen where like, you know, maybe you'll put out an app as your second priority. Uh, mobile is now the primary screen that you should expect your users to be on. Um, so if you're a web company, mobile development is not really a choice anymore, or it shouldn't be. Um, this is where your users are at. Um, that being said, mobile development is hard. Um, and it's difficult for a bunch of different reasons. Um, so I had done some iOS and Android programming uh, before I came to the world of front-end web development. Um, and it's interesting because it's a world with lots of platform-specific arcana. Uh, you end up having to learn a lot of specific things to your platform. Uh, and yes, like you have to learn a specific programming language. Most people don't touch Objective-C before they do iOS development. Um, but even more than that, you need a deep knowledge of each of these platforms, right? Um, and what you end up with is these knowledge silos. So an iOS developer and an Android developer who are both experts in their domain can't really collaborate all that well necessarily. Um, and if you're building for web, iOS, and Android, you end up re-implementing everything at least three times. Uh, and that really slows down uh, how quickly you can build new features, how quickly you can experiment. Um, no one really loves this state of affairs. Um, but the alternatives to traditional mobile development are not super great. Uh, there's lots of prior work here. There's lots of people who have tried different approaches. Sometimes they're good enough. A lot of the times they're not. Uh, so this includes things that are like, you know, promise to give you cross-platform app development, whether that's JavaScript-based or something else. It also includes attempts to make the mobile web uh, people's primary means of interacting with your app. Um, I really like this quote. Um, so this is from 2012. Uh, this is Zuckerberg saying, the biggest mistake we've made as a company is betting on HTML5 over native. Um, so this is, this is obviously a little bit dated at this point, right? But there was this idea that maybe if we just make mobile web good enough, uh, we won't have to invest all this time in writing native mobile apps. Uh, surprisingly, maybe, this doesn't really work, at least not at the time. Mobile web wasn't there. If you really want to deliver excellent, high quality, top of the line, uh, experiences to your users, you don't really have a choice at this point. All right, so skip ahead to 2015. Uh, this is the very first React Conf. Um, it's held at Facebook headquarters in California. And on the second day of the conference, in the morning, we get this keynote speech uh, in which something pretty weird is announced. Um, so I'm quoting here from a blog report on the conference. Um, Game changer, Facebook brings React JavaScript to native mobile. Uh, and there's this quote, what if we take the exact same React JavaScript we've been running on web, and we can use it to power truly native applications. Um, so during this announcement of React Native, uh, you know, a lot of promises are made, a lot of claims are made. Um, and so the general vision that's articulated is that you're gonna be able to learn once and write anywhere. You'll notice that this thing gets repeated all the time when people talk about React Native, it's still part of the core vision. Uh, you'll be able to write JavaScript for iOS and Android, and you'll get native level performance. Um, so for a lot of people, this sort of describes the holy grail of cross-platform app development. It's like, wow, I can use one language and maybe get code reuse, and it'll still be native quality. That's really the last point is the key. Um, so the audience reacts. 
Uh, the audience is very excited by this announcement. Um, it sounds to a lot of people like, you know, the solution we've been waiting for. Um, at the same time, a lot of people react with skepticism because, you know, we've, we've seen these kinds of claims before. And so I don't remember who said this, and I apologize, but I was having a conversation with someone at the conference, uh, and they said that it's not interesting that we're trying this. What'll matter is if we get it right because there is a lot of prior work in this space. There are a lot of people who have tried to do cross-platform app development. A lot of them have very good products, um, and yet it's not quite enough for a lot of people. It's not quite enough to displace uh, traditional iOS and Android development as the standard and as the sort of uh, top of the line standard. All right, so despite that, despite the skepticism, this is a really exciting claim. Uh, so the hype kicks off, people get really excited. And Facebook does this kind of cool thing, which is that they tell all the conference attendees, you are special. You get early access to this thing. We're gonna do an alpha release, and you're gonna be the only ones who get to play with this until we release it to the public. Um, which, of course, spurs people downloading the code onto flash drives and sharing it with their coworkers and feeling slightly guilty about it and not being sure if they can tweet about it or not and all this stuff. Um, but this was actually a very clever move. Because it means that you have a few hundred like really excited early adopters who feel like they have a very good reason to try out this technology right now. Um, so I was excited about this. I do not work at Facebook. I have never worked at Facebook. Um, and I went back to my company. And at the time, I was working at a startup called Code Academy, which is coding education. And I said, hey, I want to try out this new thing. I have no idea if it's going to work or not, but it seems neat. Um, and so our designers had prototyped out an app a few weeks prior, but we didn't have any mobile engineers. We had like eight engineers in the entire company. Um, so, you know, it was going to be a huge investment if we actually wanted to build a mobile app the usual way. So I said, okay, I'm going to try this new thing called React Native. Um, I'm going to take two days to do it, and we'll see how far I get. And so what you can see right there is on the left, that's the mock that the designer gave. And on the right is how far I was able to get uh, in two days with React Native in the iOS simulator, I built a functioning flashcard app. It was great. Um, I blogged about it. Um, and my notes at the time said, you know, this feels just like web development, uh, but targeting a different platform. And that was sort of something I hadn't quite expected, was um, how different the development processes on these platforms feel. So normally for mobile development, you make a change, you have to recompile your app. That can take anywhere from five minutes to 20 to sometimes longer. If you're doing any kind of UI changes, that really, really discourages you from tweaking things and getting it right. If you're used to working on the web, you know, you go into your text editor, you make a few changes, you hit save, you hit refresh, the changes are right there. With React Native, you go into your text editor, you make a few changes, you hit refresh, except in the iOS simulator instead of your browser, and the changes are right there. Um, now we have live reloads, so you don't even have to, like, you know, do anything and it's magic. Um, so this was really cool and I thought that it was really awesome that, you know, coming from this web-based framework that you could get to that kind of uh, end goal so quickly. Um, so the alpha. There's really sparse documentation. The API is incomplete. There's a lot of things that are just randomly missing. Um, it's iOS only. There's no mention of like when Android is coming even though it was in all of like the promotional speeches and stuff. Um, and it's compelling enough to drive the hype, right? I think this is a really good example of launching something as soon as possible in order to make the argument. Um, so why the excitement? Uh, for one, React Native is sort of promising to be mobile development for web developers. If you're coming at this from primarily a front-end background, mobile dev can often seem like this impenetrable, weird thing you don't know how to, like, there's all this knowledge, how do you get started? Uh, React Native says, hey, just download this thing and don't worry about it, like, you'll be coding in within an hour, and it's great. There's also this promise that says that you can learn once and write anywhere. Um, I don't know any developers who are excited about the idea of having to do their work in triplicate for every platform, so this is really cool. Um, there's the instant gratification of like saving your code and immediately getting to see the results, whether or not it's in the iOS simulator or on the physical iPhone. And then also, remember, we're talking about people who attended the conference. So these are people who are already really passionate about React, who really like the way uh, that, uh, you know, that React encourages you to write code. And these kinds of patterns are present for mobile now. Um, so you're taking a way of developing that people already like and have like a strong attachment to uh, and saying, hey, you can do it over here now too. All right, 
So skip forward a couple months. Uh, we've had the hype building and people have been slowly talking about it. Uh, and then we get to March 2015. All right, and everyone's super excited. And then everything was perfect, right? Like, yay, React Native's release, we're all done now. Um, of course not. Um, so the public release happens and everyone can get their hands on it. And of course there are early adopter problems. So setup is kind of funky. There's all these weird dependencies you need to install because remember you're installing your iOS developer setup, which is super fun, and your JavaScript environment and all this other stuff. Um, no one's sure what best practices are yet. Can you build hybrid apps? Who knows? Um, there's not really any support for developing from Linux or Windows, which for a lot of people is sort of frustrating. Um, and Android support is still a giant question mark, again, despite the fact that this was a huge part of the, like, uh, the pitch. Um, also, every release introduces breaking changes for the first few months. All of that doesn't matter, actually, um, because remember, this is a super fresh project. Uh, people believe that it's going to be on the bleeding edge. Everyone expects that. Uh, people are excited about this, um, and the hype train keeps on going. Uh, and like, you know, I keep invoking the hype because like it's real, right? Like people are getting into this because everyone's excited about it, but it's for very good reason. Uh, despite all of those broken things that I just named, uh, this is a period in which people are experimenting with React Native, are getting their hands dirty with it, testing it out, building out some toy apps, trying to get a feel for it, and basically trying to evaluate not whether or not it currently meets the vision articulated at React Conf, but whether or not it could in the near future. All right. So if we skip ahead six months, and during all this time people have been working with it and experimenting with it, Stack Overflow begins to populate, um, we start to see people writing about their actual experiences using it. Um, so I'm shamelessly screenshotting some Medium posts. Uh, this is from some folks at Palantir who announced in September that, hey, they've actually been using this in prod for months. Um, and the quote here is that the bottom line up front is that React Native helped us ship crucial features in less time and immediately increase the percentage of our team that contributes iOS code. That right there, that right there is exactly what people were hoping would happen. Um, and so we start to see a couple of blog posts like this, right? We get another one from someone who's an, a self-described iOS developer uh, who approaches React Native with great skepticism and then ends up concluding, fast forward a couple of months, and I'm confident enough to say I may never write an iOS app in Objective-C or Swift again. This is huge, right? This is the audience that's supposed to be the most difficult to persuade. Um, and so what we're seeing is that as people experiment with this, they start telling other people. And we go from like this sort of pie in the sky vision to people start to take React Native seriously. They say, wait a minute, there are actual companies using this. There are actual people who think that this is a better developer experience and that we still deliver the results we need. Um, and then of course, again in September, we get the Android release. And for a lot of people, this is the thing that they've been waiting for. If you're trying to pitch React Native to your company or to your team, uh, a lot of people rely on the sort of promise of cross-platform app development uh, as a reason for it. And now Android is out. Um, so September 14th, um, I was working on the book at the time and I had like, you know, the big culmination example app at the end of the book and I had written it for React Native, iOS only of course, because React Native was iOS only. Um, I upgraded React Native, and then everything worked. I don't know about you, but when I upgrade something and nothing, like, that major and nothing breaks, I assume I've done something wrong and I don't know it yet. <laughs> um, so this was really, this was really a magical moment. It, uh, and I think it points to the fact that when you work with React Native, you can sort of accidentally write cross-platform code, um, <laughs> which is a really strange feeling. Um, it, it really, I think, drives home the fact that React Native uh, much like React, tends to push you in a general direction. Um, it, it makes it easier to write in certain ways. And one of those ways is writing cross-platform code. So I was really happy about this. It was great. Um, and so let's recap, right? The vision, the promise that React Native had pitched to us was that you could learn once, write anywhere, you could write JavaScript for iOS and Android, and you could get native level performance. And so at this point, are we there yet? And I think the answer was basically, yeah. Um, and to be clear, when Android support was first released, there were tons of rough edges, right? The asset inclusion system was really weird. The API was still incomplete. It wasn't up to feature parity with iOS. Uh, what is the Navigator API even? Um, there's all this stuff that is still very rough. 
but more importantly, you can still get things done, and you can still get things done really quickly. So once Android is released, a lot of people go, wow, this is, I can, this is, we're here. Um, you know, and performance tooling is going to improve and all this other stuff, uh, but we've basically arrived at this point. Um, so let's skip forward another six months, right, uh, or so to the present day, uh, and we've seen that uh, React Native has evolved in a huge number of ways. Um, so one, there's this announcement from April uh, that now React Native is coming to uh, Microsoft and Samsung devices, uh, so you can get React Native for Windows and also your like smart TV and smartwatch and whatever else. Um, so that's huge, right? React Native is no longer just about mobile. Uh, the docs have improved a lot. They now actually acknowledge that you know you might be developing on and for multiple platforms, which is pretty great. Uh, I was really excited to see this change. Um, and a lot of the sort of broken windows and rough edges are slowly getting sanded down and fixed and repaired and built upon. People are contributing a ton of enthusiasm to solving all these problems. Uh, so this is one example, Navigation Experimental, which we heard about yesterday. Uh, I am personally super excited about. Um, but there's a lot of other things, right? Like the animated library and layout animation. That didn't exist uh, last summer. Um, or the asset inclusion system is now makes a whole lot more sense than it used to. Uh, there's all of these different parts of the API that are evolving, and yes, sometimes that introduces breaking changes, but really not anymore. The API has stabilized a lot. Um, and the development experience just continues to get better. Um, so I, read React, I lead React Native uh, introductory workshops from time to time. Um, I would not have done this a year ago. That would have been a fool's errand because everything was still really rough. Uh, these days, in three hours, you can take people from you know, never having done mobile development before to having like a working app, like a vaguely useful working app in three hours. Um, that's huge. Uh, that, I think, right there is like almost the whole pitch of React Native for me, is being able to take newcomers to the framework and bring them up to speed that quickly. And I think it really speaks to the way it's matured. Um, stealing another screenshot. So this is a blog post entitled 2016, the year React Native eats mobile development. Um, and you'll notice this is a Google Trends graph. Everyone loves Google Trends for making points in, in uh, presentations. Uh, of React Native interest versus iOS development. And if you'll look, you can see that React Native search interest has actually eclipsed that of normal iOS development. I think that's, that's nuts. Um, it's really awesome. Uh, and I think it speaks to the fact that React Native is a very compelling alternative to, to traditional mobile development. Um, at the same time, I think this kind of misses the point. It's not just that 2016 is the year that React Native eats mobile development. Um, if you look back at the graph I showed you earlier, this is actually time spent on screens in general. It's not just mobile versus desktop. So we have mobile, we have desktop and laptop web browsers, we have like the miscellaneous category, and then we have TVs. Uh, React Native is now on all of those platforms, or at least it will be soon. Um, that's huge. Uh, we're no longer just talking about mobile development. So you know you can write your React component, and it looks a lot like React for web. You return views instead of divs and all of that stuff. You pass it off to React Native, and now you can target way more than just iOS. Remember last year we only had iOS. That was a year ago. Now we have iOS, Android, Windows, Samsung devices. I've also seen GitHub projects that I am, you know, they're work in progress, but they actually are functional uh, for OSX and also for web. Uh, we saw a demo with React Native Web yesterday. So. We've got all of these platforms. I fully expect to see a lot more of them coming soon. Um, <coughs> and this is huge. Um, we also see really funny things. Raise your hand if you saw this post when it happened. Couple hands. I heard a lot of people on Twitter like laughing at this, basically. I think it's really neat. Uh, the Angular folks actually got Angular 2 up and running with React Native. That, that's kind of weird. This architecture diagram makes you think a little bit like, what is this Franken-monster that they're doing? <laughs> um, but it drives home a really interesting point, which is that React Native lets you write highly performant mobile apps with JavaScript. It doesn't actually have to be React. Uh, it's, of course, most natural to use it with React. Uh, you're going to run into some, uh, some issues around documentation and things like that if you try something bleeding edge like this, but it can be done. Um, which brings us up to where are we now. Um, and I think also this question of what is React Native at this point. Uh, we're a year and a half in, and I think that there's two stories that we can tell here. Um, 
One is the story that's basically the pitch that I think has driven a lot of React Native's growth and hype. Uh, this is the one that I used to tell people when they asked me, so what is this thing you're writing a book about anyway? Uh, React Native lets you build native quality iOS and Android apps with JavaScript and React. Um, this is sort of like a very simplified version of it, right? But it, the, uh, most of the pitch is contained there. It's this idea that, oh, you can get native quality, you can get some code reuse, uh, you can write for iOS and Android, and you'll do it with React. Um, and for most people who use React Native, this is the reason why they're doing it. This is what they're interested in. So that story is true. Um, but also, if we look at what you can do with React Native these days, uh, React Native can target these six platforms, plus I'm sure many, many more to come. Uh, and then you can program for React Native using the React framework, but apparently also Angular 2. And you know, really any other JavaScript framework, if you do that work of making them compatible, uh, or at least it seems that way, and then your app sits on top of that, right? So if I can use React Native to write Angular 2 apps for my smartwatch, my statement from before seems less true. Um, so another version of the story is that React Native is about neither mobile nor React, uh, because apparently you can use it without doing either. Um, I think both of these stories are true. And if we look at the docs for guidance, uh, we get this, this phrasing, React Native is developer efficiency across all the platforms you care about, learn once, write anywhere. I don't know about you, but if I was totally new to React Native and I read that sentence, I would not know what on earth I would use this thing for. Um, and that's not a criticism. I think that this is actually a really good articulation of, it, of where React Native is right now, which is that we both have this very specific, pragmatic vision of efficient, cross-platform uh, mobile development with great developer experience, but also React Native is more than that. It's sort of standing in as this sort of uh, lingua franca API layer that lets us target all these different platforms using JavaScript. Um, so in other words, you can basically do all the things with it as long as you're willing to put in the work. Um, and so where we're standing right now is really interesting to me because we are, again, a year and a half in. Uh, we've gone from React Native being this pie in the sky sort of pitch that people were really skeptical about. You know, there was all this prior work that had f kind of failed or at least not delivered in any world shattering ways. Um, why would you look at React Native even? And then in a very short period of time, I think React Native has really won over a lot of people, uh, including both mobile developers who are th uh, interested in trying out something a little bit outside of their scope, as well as web developers who are super excited about getting to do mobile. Um, those are two very large camps to draw from. And that's been motivated largely by this very pragmatic and focused vision of making something that has a clear business use case, uh, that has clear benefits to a ton of different teams of many different sizes. Um, and at the same time, there's some weird stuff going on. Uh, you know, I think that the idea of using Angular 2 and React Native to write smartwatch programs is kind of awesome and really weird. And I personally wouldn't want to do it, but I'm really glad someone is. Um, and I fully expect that what we're going to see is a lot more people innovating on the margins like that. Uh, we've heard from some of the talks yesterday this emphasis on understanding your tools and not treating these frameworks like a black box, right, like in Lynn's performance talk. Um, and I think React Native is another really good example of where that principle applies. Because if you understand your tools, you can say, hey, wait, this thing that is selling me this, this really awesome pitch, uh, I don't have to treat it that way. I can go wander over here and use it for something totally different and it'll still be great. Um, so I personally think that that's pretty cool. Um, so I asked all of you in a poll yesterday on Twitter uh, if you had worked with React Native before. I am super impressed that apparently like half of you answered or I just got a bunch of Twitter randers answering. Who knows? Um, and most of you said that you had never tried it. Uh, well, about half of you said you had never tried it. About half of you said you had experimented a bit. And then we have a small slice of you who have actually used this in production, which I think is great. Um, and so I have an ask of you today, which is that if you've never tried React Native, um, I hope that you will give it a shot. You're going to see and have seen a bunch of cool talks about like how to do React Native really well. Um, I hope that just the idea of easy mobile development is enough to entice you to give it a shot. Um, and for those of you who have experimented a bit, maybe last year, maybe a few months back when things were much more immature, especially if you got turned off by the fact that things were rough around the edges, take another look at it. 
in the last six months, I would say, there's been so much progress in React Native. Uh, things have gotten so much smoother that if you looked at the prototype we had last summer, uh, it's gonna feel very different uh, today. So give it another shot. And for those of you who have already deployed to the App Store, you are awesome, and I wanna hear about what you've done with it. Um, so go forth and build things, and please tell me about it. Like, I'm really curious to hear these things. Um, and thanks. So uh, if you want to talk to me afterwards, I will be hanging around. I'm also at Brindell on Twitter. You can find me. And if you want to buy my book, you get 40% off with the code OFFD from O'Reilly at bit.ly slash learningreactnative. Uh, so thank you.